Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the technique fall and cross, its execution, some things you should know about its execution, some problems that can arise, and how to fix or compensate for those problems. So fall and cross is from an attack from the rear. So what that would be is it's an attempted choke. It's not an attempted massage or shoulder grab, it's an attempted choke. So keep that in mind, this person is actually trying to choke you. The difference being is what's going on with their hand. So if they're just grabbing me, if you notice, the thumbs are not around the neck. Once the hands go vertical, that then pushes it to the neck, which then is very important when we're doing this technique because you would do it differently if they were not doing that. So keep that in mind. We're gonna to stick to what's going on in this technique. So this technique starts with us counter grabbing them. What I wanna do is I want to isolate this joint on their thumb and force it to bend back. So you wanna think of this as a a thumb lock or a finger lock. So you're gonna need a point of pivot, which would be, in this case, the grab, as you'll see, and then we're gonna be pushing the point of rotation, and that's gonna be the back of your neck. So keep that in mind as we go forward. That's what's happening here. I'm not trying to pull this forward, because if I try and pull this forward, what I've done is I've exposed his elbows, which are now anchored. And as you know, elbow anchors are your friend. So you don't want to give them a friend to work with. So you don't want to pull forward here because then they can use those elbow anchors to be used against you. What you want to do is the opposite of that. You want them to unanchor their, their, their elbows. So how do you do that? Through that joint lock that I just talked through. What we want to do is we want to think push this way and forward, not just pull out away because that's going to pull out to the ends of the thumbs. So you actually want to push those thumbs into your neck as you begin to pull forward. And if you notice what I'm doing with my elbows, I'm anchoring my elbows down into my chest. I'm not bringing them off to the side like this. So what you wanna do is you step, you wanna anchor those elbows and pull this towards your neck, which then uses that pivot point in order to push against the joint, okay? So as I begin to come forward, this is what's gonna happen. So if you notice, he unanchored his elbows, okay? So if you look at it from the side like you are, um, you can see what's happening to him, so now let's face you so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm coming in here, elbows are pointing straight ahead, I'm pushing, like I said, towards my neck as I begin to step and settle, which forces him up onto his tippy toes. So if you notice, my elbows are in tight. So let's go back to here again. We have another technique that goes clockwise in this case, which is that direction but we're gonna do something different and we're gonna go in the opposite direction. You'd say, well, why? Could be environment, could be them, could be any sort of situation where you can say, I can't go that way or I don't wanna go that way. There's two reasons why we do things, because we want to or we have to. In this case, we want to. We wanna go in that direction. So what we wanna do is once we get this lock, I'm not gonna do it very hard from now on, now that you've seen it, so he's just gonna react uh, slightly rather than extensively. So what I wanna do is I wanna step over to my left front flank in this case, but I don't want to give up my base or my uh, uh, leverage because I have, by standing up, I have leverage. Once I begin to bend over, he can then start taking advantage with it, it, of it because if you notice what we did with the elbows, uh, if I didn't anchor my elbows and he began to take advantage of me, he's getting rid of my lever. So what we wanna do is keep that lever. What does that mean? That dictates how we should do this next maneuver. We don't want to give up our lever as we begin to spin because that's what that person's going to do. They can take advantage of that lever. So what we want to do instead is keep our back up straight as we begin to step. If you notice, what I've basically done here is thrusting salute. We're in the position where I'm ready to go, I'm ready to do this technique. That's essentially what this technique is, except we're stepping to get to that position in a different way. Okay, so we get to here, we do the fall and cross. Okay, this is where the thing comes, fall and cross. What we wanna do is we wanna get these as far as we can across to expose the elbows. We don't want them nice and close and try and break the forearms because that's much harder. It's much easier to get these across and get the elbows exposed because what we're gonna be doing is thrusting salute. So what we're gonna do is do this kick. So if you notice how I'm gonna do this kick, this is traditionally called the retarded front kick which means there's a delay in time. So you can call it a delayed front kick or a retarded front kick, it doesn't matter. They both mean the same thing. 
but traditionally it's called a retarded front kick. So what that means is rather than just doing a kick like we do in thrusting salute, we're going to do the positioning, getting the break, and then extending the kick to get the kick. So keep that in mind, it's two motions rather than one. So it's a sophisticated motion. That's one way to think about it, because we're going to do a break and then a kick, which gives us the two and one, which falls into the sophistication category rather than the elementary category. Okay, so we've got them over, we get the kick or the knee and then the kick. We then pick up the check on top and deliver the elbow. Okay, there's two ways to do this elbow. One would be straight ahead, one would be to the side. Typically, the ideal phase for this is straight ahead. Just like thrusting salute, one, two, except now we've shortened it to the elbow. If they begin to turn to the side or fight or whatever, we can go off to the side and make this a circular elbow, but keep in mind, we have to worry about our, our uh, positions of balance, okay? If I'm in a neutral bow, the best position that you can push me on is this because I don't have any stability in that direction. That's why we wanna try and hit this way rather than this way because that'll destabilize me. So that's why we want to hit in that forward direction. Doesn't mean you can't, because keep in mind, we're going to take advantage of this forward momentum, and I can also take advantage of the torque in order to get it on that angle. But also keep in mind that that's my minimum depth zone, okay? So when you finish up with that elbow and finish up with that cover, you can then cross out and cover, okay? Let's go through this one more time, a lot quicker, just with a review. They're doing the choke, not a shoulder grab. We are bringing our hands in, pushing towards our neck, keeping our elbows in and down to go towards the thumbs. We don't want to lean as we do in this turn, we're gonna keep up straight. We're gonna make sure we expose the elbows, not the forearms. We then do our retarded front kick, making sure we get below the knee, then extend the kick, pick up the check on top, and elbow straight ahead. Thrusting salute, cross out the cover. One more time so that you can see it slightly faster without any explanation. Up. Hope this video helps you. Thank you very much.